Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to Adobe Live. My name is Voodoo Val, and I am going to be the host for this wonderful video editing segment that we have prepared for you today. And I'm joined by my new friend, Carl. Carl, how are you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. How's everyone doing? Hope everyone's day is fantastic. Just excited to get editing and sharing a couple of tips. Let's get into it. Yeah, I'm, I'm pumped. I like the enthusiasm. Uh, we have a lot of people kind of hanging out in the chat today. I see um, uh, Eleanor and Hike and Umicorn. We got Wade Acuff in the chat. Wade, the one and only. Uh, Noah Jones. Uh, Wade. Yeah, yeah. Uh, welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, please let us know where you folks are from, where you're tuning in from. Um, I'm in Northern California, and I know that we have a lot of really cool international folks um, in the chat. I always love to see where everyone's from. Um, we're going to dive into a little bit about Carl and what we have planned for today. But first, I would like to pull up the schedule uh, just to let you folks know what we have planned for the day. Um, there was a creative encore this morning for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge with me. Um, and we are going to be having those uh, for the rest of the week. Uh, we had the photo compositing segment with Sasha Vinogradova uh, earlier this morning, which was a really fun uh, stream. So definitely check out the replays or tune in tomorrow for more of Sasha. Uh, we had the creative encore for Claudie's Illustrator Daily Creative Challenge, followed by the video editing uh, stream that we're doing right now with Carl. Right after us, we will have an encore of Adobe XD for the Daily Creative Challenges with Howard Pinsky, followed by the draw along with Kyle T. Webster. And then we're going to uh, round out the uh, day with some extra stuff. So thank you so much for uh, checking out um, the schedule. You can also scroll down below the video player and take a look at those and get information about people who will be there. Uh, but back to the man of the hour, Carl, what do you do? Tell us a little bit about you, uh, the kind of work that you're, uh, that you're into um, and the stuff that you're usually creating. Okay. So um as about two years ago, I considered myself primarily a photographer. I thought taking photos was the only thing I was ever going to do. I was good at it. I was comfortable at it. And I, I found myself slowing down a little bit, getting a little bit, maybe a little bit too comfortable. Mm -hmm. uh, decided to throw a little bit of a wrench into the works and just decided to try and dive into video. I had a little bit of, you know, technical know-how from, you know, possessing a DSLR over the last three, four, five years. And I just decided to start playing around maybe when I take a photo or two I grab a couple of clips as well mm -hmm. and I absolutely just fell in love with the craft I, I'm, I'm friends with a lot of people who do the exact same thing as well and seeing my friends excel at making beautiful excellent videos was kind of like a creative challenge for me to try and get good at it as well and I just decided to jump into it so right now I'm about 50 50 both on the photo and video side Mm -hmm. uh, and I just, I just love creating beautiful visuals for people to enjoy on the internet. Maybe give people a little bit of escape, escapism mm. for them to, you know, close down a little bit. Cause you know, the world is in a very interesting place Yeah, and yeah. enjoy some beautiful visuals that can, you know, give some people a little bit of peace of mind and rest and stuff. Yeah. A little, little yeah. escape, little uh, yes. moment of, of peace and tranquility. I like that. Yeah. I like that a lot. We, we need more of that right now. You're doing good work. Yeah. Um, Thank you. <laughs> where, uh, just for, for anyone who's tuning in, uh, where's the best place to like find your work? Um, I know that you have uh, carlshakur.com, um, your webpage, um, but where's the best place to like, kind of just like really take in the breadth of your work? I, I'd say probably Instagram. Instagram is the place where I find myself, um, creating most frequently I've, mm -hmm. I, I've I've I have a goal set for myself this year to create 100 pieces of short video so like mm -hmm. like 100 reels this year so I'm, I'm trying to get better at making more and more short pieces of video content to just keep exercising those creative muscles and Instagram is where I spend a lot of my time I, I, as you can see it's currently up on screen I spend maybe a little bit too much time focusing on the colors I think, I think it comes from my oh, photography background though. 
the the compositions of these i haven't we haven't scrolled past one thing that i don't think belongs as a poster on a wall too i'm gonna i'm gonna write that down and put it in a diary i'm I'm serious (laughs) like don't you guys think so look at all these i could see that like most of these just like being in a home on display these are great Ah, thank you thank you thank you thank you so much yeah um, so the goal is to you post YouTube as well. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off there. No, no, of course, but... of course. Yes, <laughs> I've, I've been I've been posting. The goal is to get my my videos equally as riveting or equally as striking as these photos because I have mm. so much experience in the still world and creating art pieces. Um, the goal is to get my videos to equally as riveting and inspiring place as I as I do these photos. So I've been posting YouTube videos for a while, slowly building up a little bit of an audience, but it's currently so difficult uh, as a travel creator to travel in this day and age mm-hmm. um, because of the, you know, the current situation in the world. But uh, we're, we're doing as much as we can, as frequently as we can, and I'm, I'm loving it. So that's fun. That's awesome. That's really, really cool. Um, so yeah, why don't you. we talk a little bit about what you have planned for today? Because I'm very excited to kind of dive into okay. what we're going to be okay. working with. Yeah. So today I'm, I'm going to showcase... Um, a few of my favorite videos that I've created um, and then dive into the timeline and to the workflow of those projects. Okay. And then we're going to start, um, uh, oh, we're going to start a new, a, a new reel from scratch. Um, okay. So I'll showcase the, my workflow in creating a video that is optimized for consumption on cell phones. So um, maybe, maybe, maybe it's a reel or a TikTok or a very like, um, you know, long story that you want to post on your Instagram story, I'll show you exactly what I do. It'll be a tutorial on how I put together those reels and it should be, it should be a fun process. But the first thing I have loaded up is my, is my uh, year in review video for um, 2020. It's kind of showcasing what I did in the whole year of 2020. Um, even though it was a very difficult year, it was one of the most creatively challenging years. And it, it, I think it made me a better creator and I'm, I'm excited to share this. So. Whenever you're ready, well, I can, be, I can just play. before you press play. I just mm-hmm. want to let you know that Uriel in the chat is like, you know what? You write talking about all those images looking like they belong on a wall. <laughs> so the chat has spoken. We Shout, out to, the chat. Yeah. Shout <laughs> out to the chat. <laughs> all right. Let's, let's, let's check this out. I'm excited. All right. Sweet, sweet. All right. So every single year, Spotify does this year in review thing where it gives you statistics on all the music you've listened to this year. How many new artists you listened to, how many songs, how many hours of music you played. And that kind of thing got me thinking. What if I could delve into my devices, into my laptop, into my phone, and figure out how many miles I walked, all the statistics of every single thing I've done. So I decided to do just that. In 2020, I walked over 1.6 million steps, some of which left me pinching myself and wondering if I was dreaming. I climbed around 2,673 flights of stairs, going on hike after hike in search of that next view. And then I started the year so bright-eyed, visiting two countries before March, South Africa and Iceland. And while I was in Iceland, The world as we know it, ground to a complete halt. I ended up spending around 3,165 hours at home in Atlanta, all by myself. I kept shooting. I took around 78,000 photos this year. And despite the fact that we're in a global pandemic, I got to make some really close friends this year. I fell in love three times, but also got my heart broken three times this year. I've never felt more connected and yet so far away from the people that I care about. I told my little sister, I love you 124 times this year. Almost all those times were from the solitude of my apartment. I felt trapped and I just had to escape. So I threw a dart and drove 2,300 miles away from Atlanta in search of new beginnings. And I think I found them. 
My pops finally visited in September, which was the first time I'd seen him since the beginning of the year. I think the most important thing I've learned this year is that crisis doesn't inherently change people. It amplifies who they are. It's so vastly important to enjoy the little things because you don't understand their value until you can't enjoy them anymore. 2020 made me long for small and simple joys like being able to hug a stranger or sip out of a friend's drink. Welcome to the vlog. In some weird way. What's up, Carl? It's all brought us all together. All in all, I just wanted to say thank you for being there. Thank you for following along with me on this incredibly turbulent journey. Here's to an incredible, eventful, and exciting 2021. Right. Happy oh, New Year, everyone. Oh. Yeah. All right. Yeah, Carl. Yes. Let me holler at you for just a moment. That, like, I started to tear up, my friend. And you, oh. you were wondering if you could make your videos as gorgeous as your photos. That was, that was powerful, my friend. That was a beautiful video. Thank really. You. Thank you so much. That Thank was so amazing. Much. What do you guys think in the chat? Holler at us real quick. Let us know how you feel. That was beautiful. And, think, and and the stats, like, <laughs> how did that come about? I'm, that's what I was, I'm really curious about. It's like, how did yeah. this come together? How did you make this? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So what I like to do every year is to find um, a very artistic way to like tie up the year, like to create like a, a reel to show, oh, this is what I've done this year. And I was thinking of a creative way to, to, to wrap up the year. And I was like, what if I count every single thing I've done? Mm. So those were very those were approximates I, I looked at my number of steps i took per week and i added them together on my phone mm -hmm. uh, to get the number of steps i took i looked at the number of flights i had climbed i went through my call logs to try and count how many times i'd spoken to my sister to approximate how many times i'd said i love you that kind of thing i was kind of like trying to dive as much as i could into my uh into my logs on my phone luckily we have all these really smart devices that we travel with at all times yeah. that, that are, you know, really, really good for, you know, calculating what's going on in your life. Actually, my, my, uh, my whole family is, is FaceTiming me as we speak really? because um, we, we, yes, <laughs> we're so far. I wish I could like slide and say, say hi to the chat folks, but we're so far away. My mom is in Uganda. My dad is in Nigeria. My sister lives with my mom. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think keeping, keeping in touch on, on the phone during this time has been so important to me. Uh, and, uh, I think that that's kind of what like charged me and like really made me want to, you know, look at the last year in a very positive light. As we all know, there was the, the whole Black Lives Matter movement and like mm -hmm. coronavirus outbreaks, so much stuff going on that had like really like, w like weighed down on a lot of people. I felt like there's going to be enough negative takes for 2020. Let's try and see if we could somehow find the positive in the situation. And I, I was trying to do it and I hope I was able to do so. Yeah. I have never seen a more beautiful recap of 2020 because you're right. That that's been the theme, right? It's like, Oh yeah. my gosh, 2020 and, and everything. But I just thought that was really great. We got people yeah. in chat saying, and so media says such a gift you are blessed with appreciation. Uh, thank brother. You. Uh, thank you. Let's thank you see. So much. I'm going to go through. Yeah. Ang says that was awesome. Noah, very awesome. William. Awesome. Laureen yeah, says that is stunning. Yeah, you got a lot of, yeah. Tamara says makes 2020 seem not that bad. Gives positive <laughs> vibes. Yeah. You, mission accomplished. Mission accomplished. Yeah. 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 Oh, gosh. Um, so, uh, yeah, that is just, oof.
I love it. So, so now you've talked to us about like how you have found um, all of these like tidbits of information going through call logs and checking mm-hmm. your steps and all that stuff. Um, mm-hmm. How does the the video itself come together? Because this is, I mean, mm. you said this is everything you did in 2020. Yes. I'm curious yes. to know how you actually put it together and yeah. like also just the amount of actual footage that you're working yeah. with. Like, what is yeah. that like? I can actually, I can actually show you here. I, getting the getting the hard drives together for this for this um for this project for this live stream was actually incredibly difficult, as you can remember, while we were prepping right before the phone call because there's just simply so much footage. If yeah. I just clicked on my my video my video folder here for 2020, I have about 20 pro- projects or so, and each one ranges from you know 50 gigabytes to 100 gigabytes of just so much so much footage Mm -hmm. (laughs) like if you if you went onto my my premiere line like i had hours and hours of videos and videos and videos that i had to cut down and select from and just bunch together as best as i possibly could just to create like a sense of coherence through this stuff but um i think altogether the uh if i if i counted all the files together it would be about four terabytes of footage um across two different drives and uh, the fun part is knowing what the final product looks looks like in your mind and trying to shave that piece of wood, that piece of content till you finally get something that re- resembles it a little bit. Then I send it over to a friend. Tell me what you think, man. What do you think about this? And they'd be like, oh, this is kind of boring, but maybe you shave this part and you start to get mm-hmm. a better piece of a video. So as, as much as I'd like to take full credit for being this awesome creator, I find that a lot of the time I rely on my friends for mm-hmm. feedback on, on timing and precision and, you know, stylistic feedback, just so that I can grow. I think if, if, if there's any single one thing that I'd, I'd like somebody to take away from, from this stream is that um, never, never consider yourself an island or never like work alone by yourself for too long because having other creative minds give you input is, is very, very valuable. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah, I agree. And you know, that ties into a question that we have in the chat from Ang Bo, who says, do you come up with the story first or cut up the videos? So, mm. and that's, I, you know, that is kind of tying to like you talking about like carving that piece of wood and stuff. So do you have the plan for what you want to do yeah. or, and, and then you just kind of go for it? Or did you make all that stuff yeah. and come to the end of the year? Like, you know what, I'm going to put this all together. Like, how does, how did that so, happen? That's that's actually a really good question because because I'm a photographer primarily, I find that the only things that I'm videoing are things things that look cool, mm-hmm. that not necessarily things that advance the story. So I, I have this clip of my friend jumping off a cliff, or I have this cool time lapse of a cloud, and uh, in the end, I have when I have the storyline in my head, I have to f- create those in between pieces. So, like over over to the end of the of the video here, when I was talking to family and all that stuff, I had to, you know, call my friends and call my family and, you know, try and get you know, natural clips of us talking in order to, you know, make the voiceover fit perfectly with this stuff. So it's a, it's a mixture of both. Mm-hmm. I definitely like to go through my videos with a, you know, with a very strict plan or very, very well thought out plan. I can actually pull up my notes here and give you like a rough idea. Oh, of yeah, what, please. Of I would what love my, to see of what my old videos would look like. So for example, because I'm primarily creating for, for YouTube, I would have, um, let's hope there's no bad cuss words here because I'm always out of pocket, but like I'd have <laughs> my, my thumbnail, what I want it to look like, my title, what I want it to look like, where the location of the video would be, what the, the how the video would unfold, what the voiceover would be and what that would correlate with to what clips I want I wanted that to look like. Mm. And this is what I like to do for for uh every single one of my videos because it, it makes it makes myself a, a better creator i find that sometimes if, if you just approached it haphazardly and you weren't able to like pre-plan it you won't be able to get as good of, of a video out of it as possible so yeah, yeah and that's really so you not only had like the script basically for what you yeah. intend to say in there but you also had it lined up for like clips and videos Which now did shots? you did you put were those ideas for shots you could take and put in there or were those notes for shots you had already taken so so this is where the selection process would would come into play i would i would what i did in in november early november is i just took every single clip every single video that i took in 2020 dropped them mm-hmm. onto one timeline 
cracked open a nice little beer and <laughs> put yeah. some relaxing music in the back and just started to cut, cut, mm. cut. That looks boring. Okay, that's kind of cool. Cut, cut, cut. And then when I get maybe roughly about an hour to two hours of good footage that I think each clip is very interesting, I start to think, how can I stitch this together in mm -hmm. a good story? And then and do it all over what, again, right? Like, all over again. Yeah, yeah, just all over again. again. <laughs> and then yeah. I and then I'd find the music, see how I wanted the music to cut together, create the voiceover, and then I start dragging from my select clip. I, you can see here if you look on the timeline here, there's a uh, there's a select folder that I would have here. Mm -hmm. I'd have different groups of clips, you know, grouped together. Then I I drag them from here mm -hmm. over to a new over to the actual main sequence and try and see oh. where they would fit perfectly yeah so so my priority would probably be video and voiceover because gotcha. i know that's that would dictate the pacing of the video mm -hmm. um and that's what really dictates the story because if you can see a lot of in the beginning of the intro here a lot of the video clips really didn't have a lot to do with like you know the stuff that i was talking about mm -hmm. you know so yeah, the voice just... the voice and the story would carry the story a lot more than the visuals would and because I'm a photographer, I have access to, you know, knowing what good compositions would look like. Yeah, I, I yeah. could I could supplement the story with those beautiful visuals. Yeah. I think um I think you definitely have an eye for it. And I think it definitely shows through in your video work because that's Thank one you. of the things that struck me seeing the photography and then seeing your video um, is yeah. that the composition is excellent. You know, like it's it's Thanks. it's very good very good directing, very good um, capturing of a moment. Um, and now one thing that you said that I would like to ask you about is you said um, after you do all of these cuts and edits and things, then you choose the music. Do you have any specific places where you like to find your music? What does that process look yes. like for you? Yes, yes. So, um, oh wow, I'm just giving out, I'm giving out all the sauce here. This is, this is valuable information. I actually have over the course of the year when I'm listening to music, mm -hmm. I have, I have some, let me close this down a little bit. I have a few playlists here, video music mm. of stuff that I collect that I think will be be very interesting. So if I have in this in this playlist here called Rio, I have I I'm I'm trying to collect things that would kind of give you a very Rio kind of aesthetic. Mm -hmm. So if I if I ever have a video that I need to make something that is, you know, a little bit tropical, a little bit, you know with the Portuguese influence, Brazilian, maybe that's where I would go to. Mm -hmm. um, two of my favorite creators, Zach and Jay, they have a very edgy, very kind of like in your face, brash kind of aesthetic. And this is what this this playlist is, is very, very like aggressive, very, you know, you know, like mm -hmm. in your face and like yeah, yeah. different. Yeah. So like then it. I have vlogs. If you ever watched Fun for Louis back in the day, very chill, you know, jazzy, mm -hmm. very chill, jazzy aesthetics. Uh, and then I have, yeah. And then I have um, other, just different, different, different aspects. I, I'd, I'd go through and save these different videos in all these different folders. And then when I wanted to make the video, I would, I would look through and see. Um, this is definitely gonna fall under the film category. So I download that. I'd, mm -hmm. I'd go through the. I'd, I'd try and see if I can go through my film playlist, or I say maybe, or maybe I want to make a reel. I would go through my real talks playlist and uh choose a track and hopefully that that would fit better and i do this i don't do this really often because um obviously i don't i don't own the, own the copyrights to these very specific tracks i like to do this process once a year mm -hmm. if it's like a, a a track that i don't have licensure to because those those yearly pieces those really big pieces are passion projects and i and i want them to you know mm -hmm. you know really really speak to the, speak to the times and reflect how i was however when i'm editing for my weekly youtube videos for something that i want you know um to be able to monetize off of i go with epidemic sound epidemic sound i have and i have full li licensure for these guys they have a very very wonderful group of beautiful music that like and sound effects and so much stuff really really good for for videos and and i have uh like a trap, a trap playlist, lo-fi, rock and roll, so many, so many different genres that you can use at Epidemic Sound. Those guys are very, very clutch when it comes to getting good music for Yeah, videos. I've never actually heard of this. So thank you for the resource. This is really cool. 
Um, yeah. A lot of people in chat saying thank you. Um, Dave Fox, thanks. Thank you so much for showing us your process. You. I agree, Dave. Um, mm. This is really cool. Um, also, I did like sort of unrelated, but not quite. I did notice a little bit of George Michael in one of those playlists. And I just want to <laughs> like shout out. <laughs> I love it. I like it. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. into it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I like to keep myself on my toes, like, you know, spread my my music tastes very thin across the whole world just so that I can, you know, get inspiration from a different direction that you might not necessarily see that inspiration coming from. So that's. Yeah. I love that. Possible. I love that. Yeah. I was, I was, yeah. I was like, okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Good stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. So, so, you know, we talked about just like how you um, kind of gather information for these videos, how you're gathering, um, you know your your music and everything and your process for like organizing how you're going to put these um together um maybe uh we can kind of dive in and just like see how it how it progresses you know yes. and just kind of yeah. kind of look at the process um simon yeah. shakespeare um in the chat is also sharing some interesting resources i assume for um for music so thank you simon for kind of chiming into the to the combo here i like it um yeah. and yeah let's let's kind of dive in here and and uh yeah see what you got cooking so so first off i think the first thing that like i said that is most important for me would be um the audio tracks because that that dictates the uh tempo mm -hmm. of of the edit so as you can see um i have these these audio bits and pieces of this one voiceover. If I, if you go to, let me see if I can reveal this and find it here and see what, no, that's the, that'll be the wrong one. Let's see um, here, this one. If you go, you can see this is a six minute and 53 long mm -hmm. audio voiceover. So what, what I, what I, what I would have done before, and the video, the video is only about four minutes long. So what I would have done beforehand is just take the time to record and re-record and try and, pronounce things properly and pronounce things like and trying to work out how they would flow with the music with the music and flow with the with the beats of the video and i would yeah. record that for as long as possible and try and say phrase things differently say um oh how did how, you know try and see if i can to make to make the video a little bit more dramatic and flow better mm -hmm. and i would end up with a very very long piece of audio content so i would also do a selection process for the audio as well and then begin to stitch it together um, chop it up as much as possible to make it seem as natural as possible and see when I'm saying things, I'll, I'll make a note of what I'm saying at those specific times so that the visuals will perfectly coincide with those, those, um, those audio bits. So yeah. I, 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 I chopped the audio up and then I, I'd, I'd see how I wanted the, um, the music to coincide with it. As you can see here, this, take this, for example, this is, the uh the music so if i solo solo this track you can hear this is the music that would go along with the audio as mm -hmm. soon as i want the voiceover to start taking the main stage i'll have to drop down the audio oh i see yeah so you so, so you then like in this process it's sounding to me and correct me if i'm wrong like you really pay as much attention to and let the music dictate how the video is the video going to unfolds. flow just as much as you you know pay that attention to the actual visual footage yes 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 so if you if you if you've noticed your favorite youtubers they could be vlogging on their on their iphone or you know making sh short videos with really small cameras but as long as the audio is crisp and the audio is nice it's easier to stay and watch those low quality videos but regardless of how nice the camera is and how nice the visuals are if the if your audio is peaking and if you're getting really rough audio coming out of the channels, then for some reason, the audience is like, see you later. I'm out of here. So yeah, I bye. definitely <laughs> like to pay. <laughs> I like to pay a lot of attention to, to the audio and a couple of tricks that I use here are these, these two things. And I, these are things that I just learned on YouTube and trying to find out how can I make the audio pop a little bit harder? So when I'm talking, when I'm talking, I want that music to subdue a little bit. Mm -hmm. just so it sounds like you know like it's kind of like underwater sounding a little bit more dreamy and allows the phonetics allows the sounds of my voice or whoever is talking to stick out a little bit more so i want to illustrate this i'll play this without these two things turned on here okay this is and perfect you can listen too because we just had a question come in through the chat for this um mason says actually we want to know how he made the music be smooth while he has 
more than one sound effect and i think oh, this is like exactly yes. exactly this is spot on yeah it's perfect yeah was it who's yeah. that was that mason was that yeah. mason in the chat mason shout out mason al, al salhi i believe let me know <laughs> yes. if i pronounce that right but yeah, yeah this is perfect this is yeah amazing that this is this is exactly what it is so so i have these two different effects turned off here if i play this here for for, for instance in 2020 walked over 1.6 million steps it's like it clashes a little bit harder mm -hmm. but when i turn when i turn these things on and hit play in 2020 the music sounds a lot more subdued mm -hmm. and, I, yeah, and i'll yeah. illustrate i'll illustrate this by showcasing this as i play this alone so Okay. okay um give us one moment real quick folks we are going to make sure that you folks can hear what's happening premiere and then we'll be right back okay Okay. All right, we are back. Um, and now you folks should be able to um, hear, hear the sound the effects. Yeah, yeah, why don't you do the what you did before where you turned yes. off some of the settings again so yes. we can go yeah. over that. So, okay, again, I'm going to turn these two off and you can hear how loud and how... Um, I, I'll sing, I'll, I'll solo out this, this, this layer as well. You can... You can notice like the high ends, the bells, the mm -hmm. a lot, a lot more features of the music. Mm -hmm. But then, as soon as I I turn these on, ah, oh, yeah, it sounds it sounds like it's it's underwater, like it's not even there. It, it like it like takes a backseat to the audio, but it doesn't ruin allows... the song. You know, exactly. like it doesn't, exactly. it doesn't ruin the song and yeah. you still have like, you have the beat, you've got those really nice vocals. It's just, there's yeah. nothing. What is, what would the word, like, there's no, like, it's not punchy clicks yes. anymore yeah. that would yes. over, yeah, overtake yeah. Your, your audio. So, yeah. So I'm going to illustrate this from scratch here and have this, this, this track here. So if you play this, you see a lot of those a lot of those high clicks and stuff that'll detract from the audio so the effect that i use is the low pass filter low pass you drag okay. that and yes you drag you just go to effects it should be up here go to effects and just type in low pass it's one of i use this on every single video that i create if i'm talking just drag that on there and go to effects control to adjust the low pass and you can see immediately currently at what it's set 1400 mm -hmm. It's already it's already mm -hmm. underwater. Yeah, it, like all those all those high clicks and high, you know, symbols and all those sounds don't exist, and that helps so much when you're trying to get a story across. Because um, if you have different sounds clash and different sounds, like you know, muddying up the audio channels, then people find it hard to like st stick along with the video, and even harder to follow the story that you're trying to tell. So yeah, yeah. Those I would say, that is. Like you you have like a very specific style of like transporting somebody to another world so this is very important for you like because i would say that your video doesn't necessarily like show like here's a cool thing it's like come to this place with me yeah. is like what i get from it and so yeah. this is incredibly important for setting the stage yeah. and setting the tone for your viewer yeah, yeah. And and that that's one of my goals because I think people have become oversaturated with the blue water. Everyone is always everyone's seen the water in Bora Bora, mm -hmm. and 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 coming from a position from a creator for myself, I don't want to be actively flexing on my audience like, hey, check this out. You know, I, I'm trying to find a more authentic story to tell, and I feel like taking probably a more slower, more slow paced, more authentic route is probably the best way for people to connect with these pieces and find that I, I'm still a, this little, this guy who's like constantly in awe of the stuff that I get to do and then get to call this my job. So mm -hmm. yeah, this is definitely the direction that I like to take because, you know, I, I find that it, it still comes off as very authentic. Yeah. Um, Mode of Void in the chat uh, says, Carl, do you chop the audio in Premiere or do you use something else for that task? 
Yes. I, so what I do is I actually do use Premiere. I'm, I, I like to keep things as simple as possible. If you, if you took a look at my timelines here, you can see I have basically one, one timeline for the video, for example, and a few, a little, a few more for the, for the audio. I, I, I like to keep my, my videos as simple as possible, just simple cuts. Uh, and I do my audio treatment in Premiere as well. That, that allows me to focus less on, on the fancy flashy parts of the video and more on the storytelling aspect because i feel like that is what's more valuable the storytelling aspect so i people some sometimes people use i know adobe has a very very well fleshed out beautiful audio editing um you know but but i i really don't have that experience and i find that premiere works exactly fine for the kind of stuff that i do so it, it, i think it really just depends on how wealthy and how big the project that you're currently working on for these tiny four minute pieces that i like to create um editing editing video editing audio on premiere just works perfectly fine to me and and uh, premiere does have a few different effects like the low pass the parametric equalizer that can make those editing go as smooth and as like stress-free as possible yeah i i agree yeah. and you know i think one of the most important points in there was that you you use what is comfortable for you to use yeah. and that's something that i also try to kind of say to people is that there's so much that is possible within all of these apps i don't really think that there can be one right way to do it and yeah. in my opinion and it sounds like you would agree with me here is that mm -hmm. the way that brings you the most joy is the right way for you because yes. you want to enjoy your work. And so yes. if you want to get into Adobe Audition and you want to cut audio and do all that stuff and that's how you want to do it, that's fine. Um, but if working in Premiere and cutting your audio there and, and doing everything within this one program um, is better for you, then that's the way that you should go. You should you should follow that, that feeling and follow that instinct when it comes to developing your own workflow. Yeah, yeah perfect. Yeah. yeah, that's spot on. Alrighty. Well, you, I, 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 one thing too, that I noticed just like the difference between your videos and like me, cause I'm newer to, um, using pre uh, premiere. I use rush all the time. Um, yeah. but this is like super in depth and I see so many different clips here. Um, and so many different points where you have done what you have been explaining to us, like changing the, um, the audio levels and throwing in those low yeah. passes and everything. How, how much time would you say it took you to create this one wow. video? Um, like if you could put a number on the hours spent, cause wow. I know it's hours. Yeah. I know it is. <laughs> yeah. I think, I think this one was around 40 hours total. I don't know if there's a way to check that out on, on premiere. It tells you how much I wish there was. <laughs> yeah. I think I spent around 40 hours at my desk total trying to stitch this together like a um, like a video game in steam it tells you how yes. many hours you've played skyrim exactly, and that you need exactly. to take a break yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. so i think i think I've, I've spent i spent about about 40 hours on this especially because each of these videos comes from a completely different folder mm -hmm. uh like in my catalog and like trying to make sure that they all flow to really nicely together i have to make sure that you know that that specific clip that I picked is the best clip out of all the clips that I had collect that day. It's 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 a, it's usually a very time consuming process, but uh, when you eventually drop in that last clip and mm -hmm. pop out the last effect and you hit play and your friends are like, "Wow, that was nice," you're like, "Yes, my job here is done." So, <laughs> you're like, "Ah, yeah. yes." Yeah, yeah. That's that's a that's a satisfying feeling though, you know, yeah. as the creator, yeah. like to come to mm -hmm. those points where you're just like, "Ooh, there yeah. it is! Look what I yeah. made." I made yeah. this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Please look at it on exactly. YouTube. <laughs> yeah. I I actually um I I did another project very recently with a with a close friend of mine. We raced a Lamborghini and a Tesla from Los Angeles to Las Vegas. Wow. Um, giving each other different tasks along the way, and we're like, oh, it's gonna be a fun project, easy to edit, should take a few minutes. Um, he had a he had a videographer working with him. I had a videographer working with him, so we had so many different video files on each side and audio files and oh, syncing and it was a complete logistical nightmare but when you eventually finish the process and finish that video it just feels like yes this is why i do this this is the storytelling that i signed up for that's amazing that's yeah. so amazing so so you guys you guys race these two great cars to yeah. a destination and you had to stop and do like little little tasks like little tasks yes yeah. so so basically what we did who... We, we tried to give each other, obviously, 
you know, I feel like there's a little bit of an advantage being in the, I was in the Lamborghini, he was in the Tesla. There was a little bit of an advantage being in the Lamborghini. So we had to find it, find a way to make it an even playing ground. So at mm-hmm. every single stop along the way, I gave him different tasks. I told him he had to eat a very spicy pepper and chug it down with prune juice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, in one of the towns, he had to get his belly button pierced. It was, it was, it was something. Did he else. do it? He did. He, oh he ended up doing it. Oh my gosh! Yeah. Shout out oh to Tucker. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That is so, hilarious. Yeah, and then having having those like those kinds of I'm 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 kind of tending in that direction. I'm I'm seeing my videos shift in that direction where, um, I I put myself in a very uncomfortable situation and watch how things unfold because it it, it makes for a very in, like entertaining storytelling experience. Actually, next. The same guy we're doing a very very similar thing tomorrow the 25th we're flying to guatemala he doesn't know where we're flying he's going to be blindfolded through the whole process <laughs> we're, <laughs> we're chasing him yeah, yes. this is your friend carl <laughs> <laughs> this is my my friend yeah this yes. is your friend okay yeah, yeah. so we're, we're, we're chasing this there's an active volcano currently going off in guatemala and we want to i want to document how it's impacting the local economy when mm. they don't have they don't currently have a lot of tourism going on because of you know the covid um so i would just i just want to go in there and like photograph and see videos and connect with locals as safely as possible during this weird time yeah, and yeah. uh his challenge is that he doesn't know where we're going but i told him it's going to be a good story to tell so he's going to be blindfolded all through the airport uh, everywhere everywhere oh, and yeah it should be it should be fun. Yeah. I'm tuning in for that. It's happening. Um, mm-hmm. Another another question we have from Aang uh, in the in the chat is any tips for which clips to cut together to make the video look consistent? So I I kind of translate that to um, when you go through this process and you're picking and choosing which mm-hmm. order these clips are going to go. What is your thought yeah. process at that time? Yeah. So I think one of the one of the primary things that I like to do is to make sure things are going from left to right into frame so i i don't know if you notice here if you notice anytime i most times when i'm walking it's always left or i see the bikers going from left to right mm-hmm. he's looking left to right the motorcycle left to right the girl's facing right oh. the, the car is facing right and you know the car is driving right in the right direction cars driving right it just it just subconsciously in your mind makes oh people my gosh. think that the, the story is unfolding and this, my, one of my favorite clips in this whole video is this top-down shot of me running across this canyon. Yeah. Uh, and it also is, it also opens up left to right as well. So that's that's an easy way to 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 make things look like you 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 somehow magically strategically planned for the whole video to come together. Even though like when I'm shooting, I'm just like, yeah, let's just do it left to right. It'll it'll make sense together when we're cutting it. Mm-hmm. That's something that I like to do. Another thing that I like to do is to look for similarities. That I can I, that I can chop with. I don't know if I have any in this very specific video. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe in the end here. Uh, let's see. Um, I, it, what is called a a match cut. So it, it it'll usually be things that are very similar. Um, I don't really have many examples, but I'm I'm still show, showcasing the left to right concept that I that I like to go with. Um, but but another another thing that you could do is to look for common out like common, you know themes in your videos i I like to look for maybe if if you have like a light flaring in in frame cut it with another light flaring in frame so that um you want to you want to make it you want to pretend as that you have everything as strategically planned as possible like if someone saw this for the very first time they might think that i went and i i grabbed single clips for very very specific purposes um for every single moment in the video and that's that's the gut that's the kind of goal that you want to achieve to make people think that you've, you've thought out this incredible video mm-hmm. even though it's just it's just storytelling technique so you can you can match frames you can make things if i have a frame of a guy walking in a distance and i also have a frame of a zebra and the zebra happens to be in the exact same position that the guy was i would cut it together so that they both lined up and the the eye wouldn't be too distracted it would notice those similarities and it would create an overall a, a, a more continued feeling of like satisfaction when you're looking at the video in the end. That's amazing, yeah. truly, because I think that now knowing, you know, kind of what you were thinking and how you cut this together, it, you know, really shows me that I, 
I, I feel like I was taking on a journey, like watching that video, but I truly was because you're yeah. thinking about the direction of things. You're lighting certain elements up where my mm -hmm. eyes, now that I think of it, my eyes weren't jumping around trying to take in every single yeah. thing on the, in the video. I was just enjoying yeah. everything and it was flowing so nicely. That is so cool. That is yeah. really, really cool. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Yeah. So, so do you, you said like when you're, when you're filming and everything, you say like, let's just do it left to right. Do you have to, yeah. do you ever have to flip videos and things to, to <laughs> kind of do that? Yes. Yes. Very <laughs> frequently. And sometimes, sometimes there's, there's text on screen. So like oh, sometimes no. it's, yeah. it's like a, it's a New York taxi and you can clearly see New York city written on it, but it's like reverse. And sometimes it like catches the, the attention of the audience, but because I like to keep things cut so quickly i'm able to get away with it a lot of the time so yeah nice I, I, um, yeah a lot of that happens that happens actually a lot of a lot more than i i'd like to happen yeah yeah i was wondering because i was like that is just incredible <laughs> every single left to right every time how <laughs> um, we got paco in the chat paco has taken to the chat to ask you questions um curious to know what cameras you're shooting with carl and i think that's Ooh. an excellent question because this i was wondering good, the same thing this is a good question i actually have all my stuff and i, I might i'm gonna take a second grab my stuff real quick yeah yeah please oh. we would love to see it and maybe we can um, when he gets back, we can kind of like pull it up so we can look at yeah. his. Uh, let's let's see here. Equipment. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this. Yes. Ooh. I believe so. Treasure chest. Let's Grab this do guy. it. Bring him a little closer. Yeah, uh, maybe we can. Oh, 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 there we go. There we go. Yeah, let's check it out. Okay, so let me get get the mic here so the audio remains crisp. So first off, this is my most recent addition to my to my squad. It's the Canon R5. Very, very small and handy. It's a mirrorless camera. One of my favorite pieces of gear that I had. But that the video that you just watched, I I shot with this guy. This is my older camera. This is the 5D Mark IV. It doesn't even shoot in 4K, but um, it, it does shoot in 4K, but you, you don't get 4K 60. Um, but it's still very handy. It's it's really the price of this is going down right now because it's been replaced by this. Mm -hmm. So if you're looking for a, for a camera to start with, this is definitely the guy you want to go with. And um, that's Canon, can you, R5. What was, Canon R5. Okay. Yes, that is that is the Canon R5. My primary lens would be the 24 to 70 because he has such a versatile zoom range. That's really good for if you want to get some close ups of your friends' faces as they're doing something cool, or if you want to get like a more punched in view of a compressed landscape. That's nice as well. Uh, I have the 70 to 200, which is a bigger zoom lens. Ooh. Then I have I have the 100 to 400, which is even larger. It's um, a telescope, but... my friend. <laughs> speaking speaking of telescopes, I'm gonna I'm gonna tilt up the camera here to show you probably my favorite piece of gear is is this guy. Whoa! <laughs> what? That is so cool, man. Yeah. It's got, I like that it has like a little camera on the end. Of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like, this is a uh, 650 to 130 millimeter lens. Um, I, I got it on a whim because I needed to photograph the eclipse. I don't know if you saw, you saw the solar eclipse a few yeah, yeah. years ago. And this lens is absolutely absurd because if you wanted to zoom in, what you have to do is to stretch oh. the lens to, <laughs> to elongate it. It gets even, li even larger. So, yes. So, oh my um, gosh, that's so yes. funny. Ironically, that lens only costs something like $150. What? Um, yes. Uh, so the reason That's I bring crazy. that lens up is because it's, it was one of the, the first viral photos that I was able to make. And um, the reason it went viral was because I was in the right place at the right time, not necessarily because I had a very fantastic camera. So you say it has a small camera on it. Um, yes, it did have a small camera on it, but I was able to get that job done with that tiny camera. And, that's and it so made it, cool. It, it made it happen. Yeah, <laughs> that's amazing. Um, thank you so much for the uh, the the little unboxing. Um, of course, <laughs> all the stuff there. That's perfect. I I, yeah. I have to say, and I'm sure everyone in chat um, feels this way too. Whenever we have segments where people are like, you know, like what cameras do you use and stuff, um, sometimes you know we get the information and then I will go look up, you know, the yeah. camera and like, but we mm -hmm. just got to see all of it. <laughs> just amazing. right there. Um, Just right also, there. it looks like uh, Paco was saying um, 
uh, 5D squad still shooting with my 5D3, yeah. I believe. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go. Yo, Shut up, Paco. Um, Noah says cannon all day. Um, yeah. <laughs> Paco is just like, what in the world is that? That is awesome. Yeah, uh, Moat absurd. wants to know if it's a walking stick. Um, <laughs> Felix says, I, I want that. And I, yeah. I agree. It's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, yeah. And Jessica says, you def can't just carry that on your shoulder walking across yeah. a busy street. You can't, um, you can't. That's crazy. And it just kind of reminds me um, of something I saw like many years ago that was like talking about like the absurdity of like paparazzi with these giant like extendo yes. telescoping like things yeah. following people. And I was like, yeah. oh, that's a real yeah. camera. That is oh, it's so a thing. cool. It's a yeah. thing. If it, they're, they're so expensive, but like if you know where to look, and if it's like a, a novelty occasion, like the the reason I got it again was for the solar eclipse. I was like, I just mm -hmm. need to be able to see it Do as this, zoomed in yeah. as possible. So I'm I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go for it. I'm gonna purchase the lens. Um, cost me about two hundred and fifty dollars. Best two hundred and fifty dollars that I've spent in my life. That's it was, crazy. It's so valuable. If I if I decided to go for the Canon equivalent of that focal range, it would go upwards of something like twenty thousand dollars. Oh my and gosh. That's oh. that's not in the budget. That's not in the no. budget. No. <laughs> yeah. Um so so I have a question. Um how go often part. like since since the eclipse, how often do you use it and what do you what else do you use it for? Like how yeah, often so, does that come out of the treasure box? <laughs> um I, I usually use it. Let me see if I can pull up some of my old oh, photographs. Yeah, I'd love yeah. to see Let's like see. what you shot with it hero images i think I, I shot some stuff in in 2020 I, I usually use it if i'm trying to shoot some planes mm -hmm. like for example oh this is a perfect example of what i've shot with that Ooh. getting in there to the moon as zoomed in as possible oh my because gosh get a whole bunch of detail and if you should see the video clips of this stuff if you, when you see like the shadows going across the moon is so stunning yeah so i get some stuff like that maybe stuff of planes flying by Oh my goodness. This kind of stuff. I get, uh, let me see if I have any more. Uh, another plain one here in the distance. Oh, we have a moon one here as well. These are the kind of shots that I'm able to get with that because, um, however, if you can notice, the, the subjects of these are, are very basic. It's usually moons or planes. Why? Because I can't travel with it. It's yeah. always, it has to be right, right outside my doorstep here, just sitting on my porch watching the sun. I'm like, oh, that looks kind of cool. Go inside, grab it. And so that, that this is how this best kind of, like imagery and it like unfolds. That's incredible. Uh, I, I like, yeah. usually I see Thank pictures you. of moons like that and I'm just like, this How is like a it? satellite got this, right? <laughs> like you didn't take this from the planet. Yeah, it's the two hundred dollar telescope. It's yeah, the, telescope. yeah. <laughs> the telescope lens that gets <laughs> yeah. you up close and pertinent with Luna yeah. herself. Yeah, that's, exactly. that's how it works. <laughs> no. No. Yeah, everybody's pretty stoked about it in the chat. That's beautiful, yeah. brilliant. Um, yeah, thank you. That's awesome. Yeah, I love it. I love it. I love it. So, so, so what's next? We've talked about, um, you know, the process of how you are cutting audio and cutting video yes. um, and yeah. all this. What, what else um, can you share about the process of, yes. of cutting yeah. these together? So I, I actually have, I'm going to eject this, these two SSDs here mm -hmm. and start putting together my, uh, I, I have, I'm, I'm currently making a, a new reel. Plug it in here. And I wanted to show you guys my whole process of importing, starting a new sequence and showing you how I keep my files as organized as possible. Amazing. Okay. I'm so yes. I'm so ready. Okay, here we go. So we'll just let this load up here. Hey, come on, come on. Yeah, here we go. Video, video. So this is the project. It's called Sticky Reel. Mm. Um, and it's it's kind of it's kind of like a an expose, a short 60 second expose on how, um, I'm gonna mute this for a second, how these kinds of shots are gotten. Let me see if I can pull this up. Oh, okay, this is a great- You still hear me? All good? Yeah, yeah. Uh, give me a second. Oh, say that again, sorry. I said, I said I love this movie, this is a great movie. Uh, yes, yes. So if you look at this kind of shot, mm -hmm. when you see like, it's like a mounted on the side of the car and it's, it's yeah. like, stuck to the joker's face uh -huh. that that is the i want to showcase that kind of shot and and i have a oh, few okay. a, a few like supplementary videos like th these are also the same kind of shot you can see tom cruise face is mm -hmm. is, is on the focus here and it's really interesting <clears throat> what i have is let me see I, I i was able to get some bts footage of how they do that kind of stuff it's like a 
a oh, sticky wow. roof. Yeah, it's a sticky mount mounted to the front of the car. Yeah, and they usually just, you know, point it in the direction of the subject, and that's how car they're able to they're able to do that kind of stuff. So okay. what I've done is I've I've created a voice over here just by you know speaking to a video on my phone, mm -hmm. explaining this is hands down my favorite explaining the, the process of, of a vehicle explain the process of how those kinds of shots are gotten and then i've also got some supplementary camera footage mm -hmm. of what the, what the kind of what, what the kind of shot looks like you know oh, so you got like a, a mount and everything yes so i have nice. a mount here as well yes nice so so what what i'm going to showcase is is how i put together a reel in the uh, all together we have maybe about 15 minutes of footage I'll show you how I import it to Lightroom. It's a, not Lightroom, sorry. Into into Premiere. Mm -hmm. How I go about, you know, getting my audio. I think I have a track downloaded here. Yes. So we're we're in essence like we get to like dissect and and see a, yeah. a scene come together that you would see yeah. in mm -hmm. in film right now. This is so yes. cool. Yes. Yes. So the first thing I'll do is open up. Premiere. Okay. So open open up Premiere, create a new project from scratch. I'm gonna mm -hmm. title it Sticky Reel. Okay. Okay. Browse where I want it to be located and uh I'll I'll find that look that spot inside my my hard drive sticky reel. I want it to be here. So I'm gonna create a new folder called project file. And so this you, be, this is how you organize and make sure everything is starting to come together yes, in its proper place. Exactly. Create a project file and I'll choose that. So just to break down um, what this um, storing style is, I, I usually have my videos um, named the number of the project that I'm currently working on, okay. followed by the name of the project. So as, as you can see, this is the <clears throat> 65th video that I've worked on. This is the 66th video that I've worked on. And sometimes some other videos are located on other hard drives, so I skip a couple of numbers. Um, but this is that Lambo and Tesla video that I was talking about. Um, oh, sick. It's just sick. back there, <laughs> as you can nice. see. Very, very bulky folder. It's gonna be it's gonna yeah. probably gonna take it's gonna take forever to calculate the size. But yeah, so this is the current one that we're working on. Mm -hmm. If I double clicked on that, you'll you'll have a, a folder for oh back here about that's almost One a terabyte. terabyte. <laughs> wow. Wow. You yeah. are not messing around with these so files. much footage. Yeah. <laughs> so much footage. But luckily, this this tiny product that we're working on is a small reel, so it's not that big. What we have inside my video folder here is my camera footage. Mm -hmm. This is footage from my camera of of what I shot that day. And I put in a different this is found footage. This is videos from the movies that i'll use to illustrate my points mm -hmm. and this is it's phone like a footage folder kind of yes maybe? so this yeah. is this is phone footage this is videos showcasing me use these sticky mounts and exactly like oh, wow. what i've what i've done so I, I like to organize these different and then this is video fo folders still but these are for for audio because this i if you're I wondering made, how this is done i made voiceovers because i wanted to make it very quick and very accessible so i just spoke to my phone i've done so that have, too before like so i yeah. kind of get what you've done here is that like you yeah. could sit down in like a set and just like talk to a mic or just record it on your like phone this. yeah and then yeah. just like rip the audio from it mm -hmm. or mute the you know turn off the video and then you just have yeah. the audio track so yeah that's really so cool. the the goal for this tutorial is to kind of show, <clears throat> showcase like a more scrappy quick method of of putting together stuff because um, th doing this very frequently is what I find increases my skills, you know, because I still consider myself to be a learner. I'm constantly trying to get better at my craft and mm -hmm. get better. And hopefully I can get a more, I can take a more directorial um, role when it comes to editing, but editing these as quickly and as frequently as possible is what gets me good. Yeah. So okay. and then I have an audio folder for just the track that I'll be using for the clip. And then I have project file, which I just created when I opened Premiere. Okay. So back to Premiere here, we're going to create this. Um, let me close all this stuff in the back. On Spotify. Oh, I showed you guys a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay. So opening up Premiere, sticky reel is going to in the sticky reel folder. We're going to hit OK. Boom. Should take a little bit to set up. Now, immediately, the first thing that people would 
do is immediately start dragging stuff from their timeline. Mm -hmm. We have we have the videos, <clears throat> the video that we, you know, all the all the content that you want to chop down. Mm -hmm. The easiest thing to do, people, is just drag from your timeline. But I don't like to do that because I, I like to make sure that all my files are still very organized. So instead, what I like to do is to come in here, create a new bin for video, right? Mm -hmm. I'll double click inside that and then I'll drag all my video folders nice into that. Now, what this allows me to do is to when I'm looking in Premiere and looking at all my stuff, I'll have access to every single file where it's supposed to be. So if I located it, if I had it somewhere on my timeline and I wanted to see where it was, I could find it by just going into that, into that. You Amazing. Know? And so that just back, feels so much better. Yes. It just feels yeah. good when you're working. You don't have yeah. like gunk in the pipeline. So exactly. Yeah. So I'll, I'll do that for a video and I'll do that for audio and take note that usually a lot of this stuff in the audio folder, it'll be sound effects. It'll be music. It'll be all different, a whole bunch of different stuff, but because this is just a tiny little reel, mm -hmm. it's just a very, very simplified process. Now, uh, instead of just dragging things, I think if you, if you just immediately took for example, this camera footage and dragged it, it would give you an automatic timeline of, you know, mm -hmm. I don't, I don't know how, how, what, what the ratio, like what, what the, what the settings are and all this, yeah. it, it complicates things a little bit. So I, I prefer not to do that. What I like to do is to create a sequence from scratch. Mm. I'll, I'll create a new sequence and I have a bunch of, you know, custom settings. You can, you can make these settings by adjusting each different setting. Okay. Um, since we're making a reel or a TikTok, I, this is the, uh, this is the, this is the one I like to go. It has the, 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 the frame rate, the accurate frame rate, the accurate frame size, the pixel ratio, everything already, already dialed in so that when I, when I create that, I'll make it, I'll make the name of the sequence, the main timeline. Nice. Boom. It, it's immediately optimized for posting on a, on vertical content, you know? Yeah. Now. Something that, that let me, I'm um, just moving the window here. Something that might annoy people when they're editing is they notice, especially if they're editing a, a vertical video, they'll notice there's so much negative space on the sides. I'm finding it hard to see the video there. So I've also adjusted my workspace as well Ooh. for a vertical work process. So if I click on that, it optimizes everything. Yo, oh, yes. that's so yeah. satisfying. <laughs> yes. yes. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've optimized this so that when I, when I'm trying to edit for a vertical workspace, it's more optimized. I can see a lot more detail in here. Then I can start the whole process of dragging stuff together and, uh, and, 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 see, and seeing basically the video. So I'll, I'll come to my video here, come to my iPhone, which is Again, my iPhone audio, as you can remember, the audio is where I like to, you know, set the pace for the video. So this will be the very first thing that I chop together. Okay. I'll drag this, these two to the timeline. Let's see what this first. Is. Right, yes, this is, this is good. Hold on. Let's delete that. So this is the main voiceover element. So what my job now is to slowly cut this together into a very cohesive, um, like storytelling piece. So you did something I noticed real quick, and I think it's probably something that you're so used to doing. You did it probably without thinking, but I noticed yeah. that when you first dragged this um, onto your timeline, um, there are some empty space between the beginning ah. of the sequence and the end, and you just like <laughs> highlighted that and made it disappear. <laughs> How, what magic is this? Tell that's me. that's what I call my Houdini trick. So if Ooh, you, okay. if, for example here, Oh my goodness, there's an empty space here. Alakazam, Alakabam, Alakazoo. God, oh, boom. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. So that, that's the end of the live stream. Thank you guys for watching. Bye. Yeah. <laughs> Peace out. I just like, I just smoke bomb. I just take <laughs> Disappear. Just, just, yeah. Um, um, yeah. No, that's really so, great because I have found myself in situations where I want to um, delete that space. Kind of, yeah, to delete yeah. that space. But sometimes yeah. what I do is I drag it manually and I drag it and, and mess up other clips. Drag it over and it's all yeah. everything's all messy. Mm -hmm. This yeah. this is one of the most frustrating things when I started editing. I had to find a way to get across that, and I discovered these shortcuts on on 
on YouTube. These mm-hmm. these three Z X and C. So that that what I just pressed right there was X Ripple okay. Delete. Ripple Delete. Ripple Delete. And okay. I, I'd like to highlight that these are not the official shortcuts that that show up on Premiere when you first load in Premiere. So what you want to do is you definitely want to change these and make these these because they're so they're so convenient. I'll, I'll showcase how convenient how convenient they are. They're so convenient that I've I've actually forgotten the names of the tools and I just identify by the key that I press. Nice. So I didn't I, I didn't actually know the name that of add edit, you know, ripple delete and all that. Mm-hmm. But so if you if you click on this space and you want to get rid of that, so long as there are no messy things around, if you just hit X, if you just hit ripple delete, boom, it disappears. Perfect. Say say for example that like I'm gonna I'm gonna just create an instance for example here. Have I have clips you have clips all over the place you have this guy this guy's all here it's all messy and you want to like just get rid of these spaces because you like all these clips and you like how they go together mm-hmm. click on the empty space x gone see you later see you later x ripple delete we're just rippling deleting all these spaces are are going so that that helps to speed the workflow up so much say for example if you're if you're i'll mute this for a second if you're going through a video and you're like oh i like this I like this spot. I want to mm-hmm. cut right here mm-hmm. rather than clicking on the razor blade tool and coming all the way back and trying to uh, like trying to, oh my goodness, I do up. that. <laughs> I just, I just, I just hit one key, add edit Z boom. And it cuts right there. Oh my gosh. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So, so, so that's, and you were saying, I want to make sure because you know, I'm about to pull up my own <laughs> as soon as this is over and, and do this And make myself. these shortcuts. Yeah. Yeah. So, so did you, route these shortcuts on your own um i assume by going yes. to keyboard short okay cool you so, go in here mm-hmm. you click on it here i i don't know what's 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 by default what is here but what you can do is you can just search the command that you want mm-hmm. add edit here and just drag it onto whatever key that key you want it to want. appear oh beautiful so, so these two are so clutch mm. so clutch for cutting add edit and ripple delete those two nice. are are amazing so uh, when I'm watching a video, say I'm watching this video, I'm like, oh, I wanted to cut there. I'll just pause mm-hmm. and hit Z. I'm like, yeah, I don't like, I don't like all this stuff. Uh, this is unfortunate. I made a mistake here. I don't like that. So I need to cut all this. I'll just click where I want to cut, hit mm-hmm. Z again. Mm-hmm. And this is the fun part. Ooh, since that me. is hi- since show that is highlighted, <laughs> <laughs> since that is highlighted, I can just hit X and boom, that disappears too. Smooth, yeah, clean. It's just, yeah, it's just like, it's just like, deleting the space with the x key oh, like that I love it yeah if you if the, if the last thing you press is add edit this is this this clip that you want to delete is automatically selected you could just hit x so that makes cutting and deleting so fast so fast Pro i can tips. <laughs> oh man yeah again this this goes to trying to you know make the whole process of you know editing your videos as seamless as possible so you can focus more on creative and less on uh, the technicalities. Oh, I want to cut. So you have to click the razor blade tool and you click the wrong thing. And these shortcuts help so much when it comes to editing. You know, I've been out here using the razor blade tool too. It's tough. It's tough. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and it's and you're trying to get it on the right. Usually, what I do is I like mm-hmm. zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, zoom in, and then like. And before you know it, you can't zoom it. anymore. You're like, that's yeah. good. Yeah, and I'm just like, I don't Let's even know where I'm at on this clip yeah. anymore. I can't. Yeah. It's perfect. Exactly. This is. I'm never gonna do anything else but this now. <sighs> yeah, it, it right. helps so much. And when you edit for like an hour with it, you're like, why have I been doing the other thing my whole oh, life? Yeah. This is this is so much smoother and so much My better. My life has been a sham up to this moment <laughs> learning about up the until this point. key. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so what I would do then is I would um, I would go through the whole process of listening to this. You guys can join me for this process and showcase what the voiceover is is like. Okay. Um, I think I might I might edit this along with my my I, the initial iPhone clip. I see. Is it this one? Is it, uh, is it this one? Yeah, I, I think I might just rely on the on the voiceover. Okay. So I'm just this might be this might be a little bit tedious, but but we got this. We're gonna we're gonna zoom through this. This is hands down my favorite kind of cinematic shot to get. Boom, that's good right there. I know I didn't make any mistake. I'm just gonna hit that Z key mm-hmm. to add edit to cut it because I know Carl is hands down gonna make a bunch of mistakes here. So you gotta get ready <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> to delete. All of, all those clips. Okay, so locked off shots of a section of a boom. 
Thank you. I was doing this in the airport this right as so I started. Raw, this is beautiful. <laughs> yeah, you can see the frustration in my eyes too. Locked up shots of a section of a. <laughs> I'm like, why did you have to announce right now? Okay. Right. Yeah. You're looking yeah. at her like, listen, Carol. I'm like, listen, I, listen, chill. I can't work like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And this is the day to day of what it, when it comes to like editing these these tiny clips. So, I'm I'm gonna keep listening and seeing is she still talking? Hands down, my no, favorite. So, taking a look at the waveform here, this is probably where she stopped talking. I can start listening from here as well. Okay. I'll immediately add edit and ripple delete that because I know I'll never need that again. Oh. Start listening again. This is hands down my favorite kind of shot to get. Locked off shots of a section of a vehicle speeding through our streets. Locked. Okay, so that wasn't good. I'll add edit there. Start listening. Delete this last guy. Locked off shots of a section of a vehicle speeding through the streets. I, I, usually the very the very last take that I make is is the one that is 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 the best. So yeah, because you kind of stop like once you do something you like, yes. so you can. Yeah. You, one of the things that I do personally, and it looks like you're doing this as well, so maybe I'll bring it up just for the sake of mm -hmm. chat, is like when you're going yeah. through and you are looking for where you're supposed to cut sometimes you can really just look at the audio levels on yes. on that track yeah. and yeah. something that i do whenever i'm doing cuts um and obviously i wouldn't do this if i was recording a voiceover in an airport because people would look yeah. at me like i'm insane <laughs> um but if i'm sitting at my desk and i'm recording a voiceover for a video every time i finish a take i clap in front of my microphone and then Ooh. when i look at the audio i can see that peaking sound Wow, that's, that's a good point. Now I'm taking notes. That is a good idea. Because <laughs> then when oh, you look God. at it, like you can always see like where there's empty space and yeah. you're not um, you're not talking. So you can kind of judge by there. But sometimes like you just saw just now, Carl actually had this um, announcement come into the middle of his video. And so if you're just looking at that audio track, you might mistake her announcement for one of his takes, but if yes. you clap next to that microphone, it will be a peak. peaking sound. Yeah, that's yeah. unlike any other natural sound you're gonna get, mm -hmm. and you can yeah. find those markers. That's a very good point. That's a very good point. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna try and see if I can keep finding. I can very very similar to that that peaking sound that you would hear. I can see a very distinctive difference between this amount of audio mm -hmm. and this audio because my mouth is much closer to the microphone here. Oh, um, gotcha. this is definitely the audio that I want to be reviewing and not all this stuff. So I'm sure if I clicked on this, this would be just airport stuff. Are yep. And that's mm -hmm. not what we want. So we're just going to add edit and Alakazam, Alakaboom, ripple delete. See you later. Gone. Bye. Thank you for um, giving <laughs> us the, the, the verbal magical spells here too. Yes. Like it's, it's, I, it's just <laughs> perfect. <laughs> I, I don't, I don't think, I actually don't think it works if you don't say those words. So. Oh, okay. Got it. So yeah. take notes, everyone. <laughs> I, I want to make sure that everyone is actually casting spells you know, in their home while editing, because if you don't, it's just not going to work. I just ain't going to do it. So. Right. Okay. Here we go. Back to these very slightly tedious process to see. I've seen this in many Hollywood projects, including Mission Impossible, The Joker, Batman, including Mission Impossible, The Joker. Okay, so I made a mistake from including Hollywood projects, including Mission Including Mission, Mission Impossible. Impossible. Okay, so. Including Mission Impossible, The Joker. I've seen this in many Hollywood projects, including Mission Impossible. I like that you really start like instantly as soon as you make that mistake i have yep. like four seconds of <sighs> <laughs> you know like yeah. in mind yeah. i'm just like come on yeah. now yeah. what's yeah. your problem <laughs> yeah it, it gets it gets frustrating but it, it helps when I'm, I'm in the airport by myself none of my friends you know i was i was coming back from nashville none of my friends far away from everyone in a tiny little corner uh -huh. so i i'm not embarrassed I, I don't get like intimidated by making those mistakes when i'm by myself but if i had to do a voice over here on chat while everyone's looking and i have to say the, the script really well it might be a little bit more you know breathing oh, hard oh, and man, <laughs> yeah my, my takes are always very like self-depreciating where i'm just yeah. like you you are not doing this right come on like, come on together I can't work like this, Val. <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> yeah. The Joker, The Dark Knight, and many, many more. Okay, that was a good one right there. I know that's good, so I'm just gonna cut that. If you're wondering how if you're wondering how this is done, let me show you. It's usually a variation. Okay, this is good from there. Add edit, ripple, delete. If you're wondering how this is done, let me show you. 
It's usually a variation of a suction cup mount attached to a car, and that way. Okay. It's usually a variation. Of okay, so let me show you. Deleting all that. So this is this goes right back to that the beginning video that we were talking about mm -hmm. of how you make so many mistakes when you're trying to get your point across, but like just saying it as many times and as frequently as possible, and also having I'm gonna I'm gonna show you my notes for this. Having access to a script helps so much. I actually have my um, let's see suction cup video. Here we go. I actually have my script pulled up as we're speaking. Yeah, so I'm I'm looking I'm looking at my computer while I edit while I try and say these these things, and I have I know where the shots the shots come. You know, I have on the bottom here. I'm saying getting in the car, slam at the door. Gotcha, you know, gotcha. Talking to camera. This is how I know what what kind of shots are gonna come up. So it helps to have the the script pulled up and just try and say it as many times until you get very comfortable. And then before you know it. If, if you if you read if you listen to this all together for example starting from the second clip this is hands down my favorite kind of shot to get i've seen this in many hollywood projects including mission impossible the joker the dark knight and many many more if you're wondering see that that's that sounds like i had a very excellent one take wonder and i'm just really good at yeah, doing really voiceovers does. Yeah. <laughs> but you don't see all the little cuts that I've made and all the boo-boos and mm -hmm. the airport lady cramping my style and all that. But yeah. So don't don't be afraid to like pull up a script if you're trying to get a story across and you know let people know something cool about something that you're working on. Mm -hmm. Or if you're trying to create this interesting, you know, story, story storytelling piece, don't be afraid to pull up a script right across your message, get acquainted with the words and keep keep saying them over and over again. It might be a very long video like this one is, but mm -hmm. eventually when you do cut down the cut down the video, it'll it'll fit just nicely. So I'm going to I'm going to get back to chopping this up. Another thing that I'd like to bring up just while you're mm -hmm. kind of chopping through um, audio is um, I think it's also important something that I have personally made it my mission to do is to help folks in the chat who are here to learn um, from our guests to understand like the difference between reality and like what you assume about content creators. And I think that's typically like how you tend to do your work as well. Like you have a very raw, very honest approach. And so maybe you will kind of appreciate that. Like, I think when we watch um, videos, like, you know, these amazing videos that content creators put together, it's really easy for us to assume that this person sat down, just did a voiceover and it sounds good and they just went for it and boom. But you're kind of showing here how um, the process actually looks and what it yeah. takes to get that perfect cut. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so everyone in chat knows when you actually, um, when you take a job um, as uh, a, a video creator and you take a, you know, you get a sponsored gig or you take a job doing a video for a company or something, they typically mm -hmm. ask you for a script. That's one of the yeah. things that you, that you're expected to supply um, to, to people. So it's not, you yeah. know, like these amazing people just sitting down and doing everything perfect the first time. Like there yeah. is a script, there is a lot of cutting and editing. Um, yeah. And it's not like, cause I used to think, well, I've seen so-and-so do videos and that, audio sounds perfect every time yeah. and so they must yeah. just be doing it the first time easy peasy no none <laughs> no, of us no, no. are doing that <laughs> none of us are because we're humans you know we make mistakes we need something to read sometimes yeah. when we go yeah. through and do this so um if you need a script and stuff so does everyone else you yeah. know what i mean like that's just yeah. part of the process it's very yeah. important yeah <clears throat> trial and error there's so much trial and error even even this is just the audio segment alone just imagine how much how many mistakes i've made when i'm trying to get my video across so i'm gonna i don't, I don't know if i can mute this but um I, I i'm trying to make so many clips and as you can see in this in this video i don't have my wrist brace on i, I currently have a wrist injury so i'm trying oh, to no. <laughs> yeah do this because I'm going to be on camera. I want to project this charismatic character mm -hmm. that I'm trying, who doesn't have a wrist injury, but I've in never this, been injured in my life, sir. In my life, never happened. About. No, but I, I, I'm man. trying to leverage this this suction cup mount that is like heavy grade, and mm -hmm. I'm hurting my wrist, and it's like so it's so infuriating and frustrating. Mm -hmm. Things almost never unfold as smoothly as you want them to unfold. Never. Mm -hmm. 
but like just trying and trying again and trying again and not giving up and just like, hey, I'm just going to try and do it one more take, maybe one more take. Mm-hmm. That usually is what results in that final delicious polished piece of, con- piece of content. Yeah, mm-hmm. that's, that's, that's why I really like this, because if you keep trying and keep trying, you have no choice but to inevitably just get better. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Okay, so back to trying to chop this up. Let's it's see. usually a variation of a suction cup mount attached to your car and the camera. The stunt driver is able to keep driving as the camera rolls. And if you're wondering if this is sturdy enough to hold your camera. Okay, so I know I, I, I stopped here. Mm-hmm. I'm just remembering back to my takes. I know I made so many mistakes and so many pauses. So I'm going to skip ahead. Let's see. But I'm pretty sure it's pretty sturdy. Let's see. There is some risk involved, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty sturdy. Ah, no, it's the airport lady who there messed me up. <laughs> there she goes again. There she goes. Some Gotta risk magic involved, that out of there. But I'm pretty sure it's pretty. Let's see. But I'm pretty sure it's pretty sturdy. But I'm pretty sure it's pretty sturdy. Okay, good. I'll chop this for the sake of time. This is already a very cohesive voice over 35 seconds. Good mm-hmm. for a reel. I'll chop that all off in the end right there. The risk involved. But I'm pretty sure it's pretty sturdy. Okay, let's see if we have a cohesive idea for the video. This is hands down my favorite kind of shot to get. I've seen this in many Hollywood. This is probably a little bit too much of a long break here when I smack my lips. Delete that. Don't need to hear that. Thanks, Carl. (laughs) This is hands down my favorite kind of shot to get. I've seen this in many Hollywood projects, including Mission Impossible, The Joker, The Dark Knight, and many, many more. If you're wondering how this is done, let me show you. It's usually a variation. Okay, there you go. A little bit of a pause there as well. So we're going to try and make this as concise and as crisp as possible. Delete this. Again, if anyone's just tuning in, that's the add, edit, and ripple delete tool. Those guys are fundamental to chopping very quickly. Mm-hmm. Um, We've been casting yeah. spells here, y'all. It's Carl <laughs> Potter and the ripple delete hockey. That's what we are doing today. Oh, hey, that was good. That was quick. That was quick. Hey. I like that. Right. <laughs> I got right, some okay. skills. I got some stuff yeah. getting on my sleeve, okay? <laughs> it's okay, usually a go. variation of a suction cup mount attached to your car and the camera. The stunt driver is able to keep driving as the camera rolls. And if you're wondering if this is sturdy enough to hold your camera, there is some risk involved, but I'm pretty sure it's pretty sturdy. Boom. Nice. That's good. So we have a 25 second video. Instrumental. There we go. Well, it looks like we have a, we had a pause there for just a second. Are we all good? Let me see. Yeah, I think I think it's good now. Okay. If you want to go back just a few moments, um, just before you, you like you drug that in there. <clears throat> okay, we have we have this full. The timeline is good to go. Um, everything's looking good. Now I've I've listened to the audio. It's kind of good. Mm-hmm. It's, it's good to go. Cemented. I'm I'm going to delete the video clips because, as you can remember, this is just an iPhone video that I created. I'm just going to hold Option. If I, if I selected everything together, it would select the audio as well. And we don't want that. So we want to select only the video clips to be deleted. So I'll hold option, drag it across the video files. Nice. I'll select that, delete those guys. So Boom. option, if you, because that's something that I actually see a lot of people asking about in chat is every time I try yeah. to delete the audio or the video if I just from a del- clip. Yeah. 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 They're it's like so, tied so together. Yeah. Yes. So, so. so that's how you would do that then is holding option. Yes. Um, exactly. So if you didn't want them to be tied together, the, the long convoluted process would be to click on it, right click, go on here, untie them or unlink if you're using the mm. official term, unlink okay. them, click out, and then click on this and delete that. Or you could just hold option and click and then you select that alone and delete. Gotcha. So you have two options. So, so I'm going to hold option, select all the ones that I want to delete by themselves and delete that. And it's all Perfect. good to go. Check this. Um, instrumental mm-hmm. here that i want to have playing in the background of the video uh, I'll, I'll take that down i usually go down around 20 decibels for music that i want that i want to play as well as the as the audio and then so you here. really have like basically a good know-how for how you want the the audio to be and you just knock that down instantly yes and then yes. I, I assume adjust as necessary for each individual yes. video that's great yes yeah, and then we'll come here. 
Um, also, Lisa was saying in chat, she feels much better about her voiceovers now. Um, and yes, <laughs> yes. Um, and Steve says, struggling with typing like me today. I love it. So yeah, I just, you know, you know, we're, we're all people. We're all people. So doing our this thing. is what, this is what the, everyone, all the creators on the internet don't want you to know is that we're all fallible and we all make mistakes and yep. we're human as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So now I that you're it. getting an inside look into the, uh, into the creative process, it, it's unfortunately not perfect, but it gets the job done. And that's what we like to hear. Mm -hmm. So we like to see the job yeah. done. Okay. So I have a section of the audio just a random section slid into the end there to just see if it goes together we can see if it works this is hands down my favorite kind of shot to get i've seen this in many hollywood projects including mission okay i think i like it when the bass starts because the, the audio is very very my voice is very high so i might increase the sound of that maybe by nine decibels and okay, uh, I know I, I, that worked really fast. What you could do is you could right click, I think, and go to audio gain and mm -hmm. adjust the audio. But a shortcut that I like to <clears> use <throat> is G. Just hit G, boom, and it comes Perfect. up. Nice. Guys, short, shortcuts can save okay. lives. Shortcuts are the way forward. Oh, yeah. seriously. Um, <laughs> I, I I will tell you, because um, I, I use Photoshop a lot, um, mm -hmm. and I learned the the shortcuts and the hotkeys and stuff and i'm telling you once i got comfortable with them i cut yeah. my project time in half so literally. quickly yeah. yeah because i don't have to go into the into the menus and search for all these select things tools you know yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I highly recommend anybody whatever program you're working in look up the hotkeys for your most used tools that you have and yeah. Write it down on a piece of paper, post it next to your monitor so you can glance over at any time and just yeah. try and use those those shortcuts and those hotkeys. Yeah. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so now I'm going to test again to see if the audio goes well together. This is hands down my favorite kind of shot to get. I've seen this in many Hollywood projects, including Mission Impossible, The Joke. Yeah, so that, that, that sounds really nice. Yeah. What I'm going to what I'm going to do is come to my all my footage now and just drag them onto the timeline. This is where you'll get a better look at how I cut my, my audio. So I know for all of these video clips, I don't need the audio at all. So I'm just going to option select the audio on the bottom, delete all that, gone. Um, so this is the uh, kind of like the audio that I want to, you know, showcase stuff, like some, some of the found footage that I found online and mm -hmm. stuff that this, this is just for a reel that I'm making. And then I also have some iPhone footage of myself, you know, showcasing the suction cup um, thing that I that I have, mm -hmm. and I and I don't need I don't need the audio there as well, so I'm going to option select that as well, delete that. See you later. Um, and then we have camera footage of me whipping around in my car with the suction cup mount. I'm going to drag that onto the timeline as well. Looking at it, I see see what's going on here. Oh, I think it's 4K footage, so. It's yeah there we go don't need the audio gonna just option select all that and delete it so now now is where we start cutting cutting these little tidbits that can go very nicely in videos okay so i'm gonna take this but as you can see we have a on the top on the bottom here we have black squares that mm -hmm. if you're looking at, at a reel on your phone you'd be like what's going on here you don't really want that so you come to effects control and then you slowly zoom until you fill the frame just nice. just a little bit over just right there yeah so this i'm probably going to use this for what i'm saying it's a suction cup mount blah 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 when i'm talking in the video so i'll i want to select that here i'll use my add edit to cut all the other stuff mm -hmm. take that clip that's a really good clip Ooh, as you can see if you start playing it's a good clip up until it starts to crash zoom Mm -hmm. So I'll, I'll go back to the beginning here and put a keyframe where the position of the video is. This is good. I'll put another keyframe. Uh, let me, let me, let me cut this here so they can see, see the keyframes a lot more, a lot better. So, so what I want to do is make sure that the subject is always in the center of the frame. As you can see, when we, when we zoom into Tom Cruise's beautiful jawline here, <laughs> The camera, the, the camera that's that's recording his face is not in the center of the frame. So I'm gonna use the keyframes to make it so that at every single moment you're able to see the car and the camera on frame. So we're gonna go back to the beginning and start clicking forward frame by frame. This is all good. This is good. 
at this point, it's kind of sliding to the left. So I'll drag this using my the slider tool here for the position. I'll drag this to the center. That's oh, good. Oh, I see. Okay. Yep. Click forward a little bit more. Oh, there we go. It's going out of frame. Drag it back to the center. Click forward a little bit more for frame frame. Drag it back to the center. Okay, that's good. That's good. Just keep making sure that 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 subject is in the center of the frame. That's good. Okay, so if you remember from before, the camera was completely out of frame for the zoom, but look at this now. It stays oh, static. Amazing. In the middle of the frame. And that's that's exactly what we want. So beautiful. Just that that tiny little clip right there is very good for illustrating my my point about the suction cup mounts. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna stop as soon as they caught it there and then cut right there using my add edit tool. Scrub through the rest of the video and see what's going on. Oh, that's a good one too. Maybe yeah, I'll just slide like to the left and see. Oh, oh that, so you can one. see the whole thing. Oh, okay. Yes. This is really cool too, because one of the things that I struggle with is taking footage and making it um, something that can be like you get the full breadth of the point I'm trying to get across, even for mm -hmm. different ratios and social platforms and stuff. Mm -hmm. And so this would be an excellent way where if you have something that's at, uh, you know, 1920 by 1080 in like yeah. a regular kind of widescreen view, but you're yeah. doing the 1920 by 1080 oriented for like an Instagram story yes. or reel yeah. or something. Yeah. You can do yeah. this and it doesn't matter that they're not, you know, the same orientation. The whole, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So. You can, you can get all that information in there and show your audience exactly what you mean, exactly. even though the videos are going to be oriented totally different. This is wonderful. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's a very important tool, especially for if you're creating primarily for consumption of media on TikTok or, or Twitter or, you, you know, Instagram stories or reels, because yeah. um, if you if you if you were shooting on your camera and you were shooting landscape and you created the whole video landscape, and you're like, man, this video is cool, mm -hmm. but I'm going to have those those dreaded black bars on the top and bottom of my video. Feel free to zoom right in and mm -hmm. keyframe to certain segments of the video so that you can still get the same, the rough idea across and have the audience fully engaged still as you're creating the video and and still benefit from creating the video in the first place. Well, or another thing you could do is to have it shot completely in vertical, yeah, which which sure. which is fine, which is which is doable. But when you're trying to create like found footage pieces, like or documentary pieces, where you have to use other people's audio, um, other people's video, you can't necessarily tell Tom Cruise, "Hey, I know you're shooting that new Mission Impossible video, but do you guys mind shooting it in vertical for me as well?" So yeah, that... so I can make a video exactly afterwards. for my Instagram stories. Unfortunately, it's not really it's Tom not Cruise really would be doable. like, you know what? I like the challenge. I, yeah, I, I, <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to have four minutes of um, Brad Pitt driving here. It's some, some montage that I found on, uh, on YouTube. This will help to galvanize those, those sticky mount clips. So I have to just go through the whole video looking for sections where um, that, that exact tool is being used. Okay. So this is all good. Let's see what this looks like. This is all good. Yes, see, as you can see here, we have a stationary clip of Brad Pitt just cruising through the hills in his car. Mm -hmm. I, I like this shot here of him in the driver's seat. Yeah, um, yeah. So I'm gonna zoom in, like just like I did for the other, the other video here. It might look a little bit dark, but if I scroll to the left and have him in the center of the frame, mm -hmm. add edit, you can see you can have a rough idea of yeah, of, like it still what I'm trying really to show shows this. me exactly. Truly. Exactly, that's so funny because so, I would never think that a widescreen shot like this could look so yeah, readable and understandable yes. thin that way. That's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So let's see if we have some more shots here that that'll be good for this video. Um, we also have a question uh, for you from Moat Avoid in the chat. Does the Canon mm -hmm. R5 allow to shoot vids in vertical? Um, um, that's that's actually a very valid valid uh, valid point so i think just to illustrate i think these are r5 clips if you look at the timeline here mm -hmm. um what you can do is you can just shoot it you can shoot it you can shoot it in um in horizontal as it's meant to be and just come with your rotation tool here and just rotate it 
this way. Oh, okay. And so even though even though you shot it horizontal, you can always switch it in post. You have nothing to worry about because even if your camera doesn't necessarily shoot in vertical or doesn't shoot in what like what orientation you want it to shoot, it takes just one click here. I I, I know I rotated it, but if you just went 90, boom. It's done. Nice. It just it'll rotate whatever way you want it to work, and it should it should be fine. So so then you can just turn the camera how you want it, and then exactly. rotate the footage later. Perfect. Exactly. Perfect. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So we're gonna go back here into these uh, clips and try and see if we can find more clips of um, uh, the Joker driving. Oh, that's a beautiful suction cup mount clip right there. Let's see. You have the Joker sticking his head out the window. Great shot. This movie yeah, made me cry. Yeah, it was, it was a, good, it was a, good, a movie. good Great movie. The, the yeah. first thing I did after watching this movie is I painted a portrait of him. I just like instantly, I wow. pulled out my iPad, I got into Fresco, and I was like, you know what? Here we go. It's about time. Yeah. <laughs> and that, that's a nice clip. We're going to take that one. In order to make sure that my all my stuff is still organized, I, I know if you can remember here, I have a whole bunch of stuff at the beginning of my timeline. What I'll do occasionally is just so my stuff doesn't get muddy because I know I have a whole bunch of clips jumbled up. I'll take the, the ones that I, the clips that I love, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll cut them from the frame mm -hmm. here and put them in the beginning of my, in the beginning. So I know the very first bunch of clips are mm -hmm. the clips that I've selected. So I think we have some, some good clips here. Just this very first one. That's good. Slide up to the front here and and uh, dump it right there. So I'll start collecting over over a few minutes. I'll start collecting various clips from all these big raw clips and just dumping them at the front here. And then mm -hmm. eventually, when I'm done dumping, I'll then listen to the track many many more. And when when I say when I say certain things, I'll drag those and where they coincide. And slowly, the video is gonna slowly unfold. Yeah. Nice. Okay. Yeah. Another another thing that I uh, another shortcut that I use to navigate my videos very well is I use the shift up and shift down. If you hold shift and you click up, it goes to the beginning of the of the clip that you're currently working on. If you click down, it goes to the end. So this allows you to toggle through your timeline very, very quickly and very, very easily. For example, if I wanted to take this, say I have this tiny little clip here, I just cut it and I want to, I want to, I want to dump it right after this one, but I don't want to zoom in all the way. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to click that space there, shift up, it'll Take me to the last clip, Command V, dump it in there, and boom, it's perfect. I didn't have to zoom in, drag, or perfect. Now I know that there is an actual word for that little blue Shift up. thing. Mm. I call it a scrubby. I got my little scrubby, <laughs> scrubby bubby, and I just like move it back Scrub and forth. Scrub in there. Yeah, but if anybody knows what that is called, I would love to know because I never remember. <laughs> Somebody even said it on Adobe Live recently, and I was like, yeah. oh, that's what that is. And then I went right back to calling it the scrubby. So <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. I think I think that's this is also the beauty of um creatives on on, on different platforms is that people optimize all their stuff to make it work for them perfectly yep. up to the point where they don't remember the like I didn't remember add edit and ripple delete I never remember the names of those tools because I just I just see them as z and x or scrubby as you as you, as you said you know yeah it's um, just that's the magic that you know how to do I, I get to yeah. the point where I reach for hotkeys like automatically and stuff and I've yeah. said before like I do hotkeys so much that like I reach for control z to undo when I mess up my eyeliner. Like it's, yeah. it's like, it's to the <laughs> point where it is a part of my life. Wow. You know? So like, yeah, you, once you, once you start getting to the groove of your own personal process, like you're exactly right. It doesn't, it's, it, it becomes less of a specific thing and more of just like, you know, a, a natural action and, yeah. and flow of things. And it's easy to forget little details like that. And then somebody mm -hmm. one day tells you, what it's called and you're like what? oh so that's what? what it's called there's a name for this you mean it's not scrubby bubby hold on, hold on. mind yeah. blown <laughs> so what i'm doing is i'm selecting different clips that i want here going back to the beginning of my timeline to dump them by cutting them out and pasting them maybe if i grab a couple from this mission impossible sequence as well let's see if you have a bunch of stuff here just gonna scrubby w through this let's see it's gone that's a good one right there. I'm gonna pause, use my add edit tool, maybe go a couple frames beforehand. Yeah. Add edit, leave that in. That's pretty good. 
take that. Scroll to the beginning of my timeline. Also, one thing I do want to point out real quick is we have a little over 10 minutes left um, yes. of the stream. Yeah. Um, so if anyone has any last minute questions or things you'd like to share uh, with uh, with Carl, please post it in the chat. Now is the time to, to ask any of those questions or things so that we have a chance to kind of because um, we are we are live and there is a slight delay, so you want to post it now so we can see all those questions come through um, and uh, have time to to answer as many as we can. So um, if you folks would like to do that, uh, that would be fabulous. Um, I'm sad because I've had such a fabulous time with you, Carl. Yeah. Like this has yeah. been so it's much been fun. so much fun. It's been it's it's been like hilarious too. <laughs> like I feel like I feel like there's been a lot of good laughs too, yeah, and this is yeah, this, this yeah. is serious. We're very serious yeah, professionals. Yeah, we're very folks. serious. <laughs> yeah, we're very we're very serious. But it's also this has just been a blast. This has been so much fun. So, um, yeah. Any last minute questions? Throw them in chat. Um, okay. Um, I'm 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 just I'm just listening here, and it looks like I had a very good take when I was on set by myself for that intro. Right here. This is hands down my favorite kind of cinematic shots to get. Just like that. So I think yeah, that would be perfect. Ooh. A, a little bit of a more interesting start to the video. So I might just take that clip, link that, and I, I might, I'll have that as my very starting clip. I, I, I did the whole voiceover while I was in the car as well. Mm -hmm. As you can see, making a lot of mistakes. Let's see. Through traffic or driving around as your subject like remains static and still in frame. Um, but it's, it's hard for me to focus and I wanted to get my point across. So I think I'm, I'm just gonna take, I'm just gonna take some visuals of me driving just to, to supplement my, my, my point. Here we go. That's great. So, so you did it twice. So then what you yes. can then do is you're not stuck to any one version of the video exactly. concept. You can go yeah. in and, and, and chop it up and move yeah. things around and yeah. supplement back and forth between yeah. your voice voiceover and your in-person um, yeah. vocals. Yeah, this that's, is great. That's, that's spot on. So I'm going to, I'm going to take that. This is good. That's a good clip right there. Let's see if you got another one. Um, Jessica T says, is this video combining his own clips with clips from films? And I, I think yes, because yes, you're you're illustrating here um, like the use of this particular tool and yeah. you're showing how it was applied. It's used in, in a professional. Films. Yes, yeah. exactly. Nice. Yeah. Which so is this great. Is, yeah. This will just be a short, like I, I don't know if you've seen any of those um reels or those TikToks that talk about, oh, this is my favorite kind of tool or this is this is how this is used in the professional. Um, basically, I want to bring more awareness to my favorite my favorite tool. It's the suction cup, very heavy duty camera mount, and you can just use it to stick on cars, stick on tables, and it, it can hold a lot of camera gear. Uh, and I think people, a lot of people, would create more interesting stuff. If they have, like, if you if you didn't know exactly what I was talking about, this kind of shot is very interesting. Just think about how on earth would this kid have created this kind of shot? Mm -hmm. Like, if you if you saw it in the intro, for example. Let me let me let me illustrate my point here. Delete all this. Delete that. Take these guys. Come all the way to the beginning of the timeline. I'll, I'll lock this guy off. Let's see where this. In many Hollywood projects, including. Okay, so this is good. So I'm gonna move this here just so I don't delete it. I'm gonna be. Oh, that's not enough. So I want to showcase like the importance of just having a very, very zingy intro here. Let's see. Starting from here. And then obviously this is too zoomed out. So I have to do the exact same zoomy thing that I do the whole mm -hmm. time. Yeah. And this is good. I'll zoom in a little bit here. Like this just to showcase my point. I'm still blown away, but like how well it still reads and stuff in a different orientation like this. And I yeah. think maybe <laughs> I maybe I myself have never tried this because yeah. I didn't I didn't understand you know the quality that I could actually achieve like yeah. using a method like yeah. this. But I'm I'm actually excited just for my own personal like video editing going forward yeah. to use these techniques. 
it's so it's so easy to get like discouraged when you're like ah oh, i would love this would make i would love to share it on instagram mm-hmm. people on instagram would love this but like oh, i shot it on a red and it's all wide and mm-hmm. uh, it's all vertical so was, let me just forget about it no i i like to try my best to repurpose content as much as possible to reduce the workload because i remember as i said i had all those videos to create at the end of the year i want to make sure that i'm doing as much as possible if i have interesting like i, I do have a lot of let me see if i can pull this up actually i have very very many if you go in the lambo and test the let's see day two um we, we worked on this on uh that'll be carl sonny yeah perfect we have many many clips used in this in this exact same style the suction cup mount take this mm-hmm. for example um a little bit of space for me to come through but this is mostly all you so here illustrating oh Oh, let's let's put that audio down we don't we don't want to clip the audio but see this is example of a suction cup mount Mm -hmm. and and this would be perfect for the video but because it's shot it's shot on vertical you might say to yourself ah it's not usable but if i dragged it and i was able to use this section of the frame or maybe just the section of the frame on his face and my car zooming by those those are very very usable yeah Okay. So yeah. All right. so, yeah. so that um, let's see what how it looks like with this uh, with this voiceover. So this is hands down my favorite kind of cinematic shots to get. I've seen this in many Hollywood projects, including Mission Impossible. This is when I I cut this. Let me lock this right here. And and then uh, perfect. This is almost a, a preliminary cut even before we start. Let's see, it sounds like uh, this is. I think I, I'd like a very a more slow lead into the audio. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so so probably better to use the beginning of the clip. Oh, we're running out of time. We're running out of time. We're running we're out of time. <laughs> <laughs> no, I feel like I feel like this is it's great though because um I feel like what you have shown me, I could go and make a total like start to finish video just because you've been so excellent at explaining your Uh, plans and and what comes next and all of these things this Mm -hmm. is really cool um and also and like to the point of like you said like you could just use that sliver in the center of that one clip of uh your friend in the car with your car going past and everything and if Mm -hmm. the i just realized you know if that car comes past and it's not in view you can just use a keyframe right and just just track track it it over yeah that's yeah great 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 yeah yeah okay so i think i think we're pulling over like pulling to the end here but i i think uh let's see it it might be perfect to have the 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 audio starting at just the right spot Mm -hmm. let's see let's see what it sounds this is hands down my favorite kind of cinematic shots to get. I've seen this in many Hollywood projects, including Mission Impossible, The Joker, The Dark Knight, and many. And then I, yeah, I would I cut. I'd, I'd cut between a lot of these, a lot of these clips. And when I get to the part where I'm, I'm starting to talk about, you know, um, whether it's sturdy or not, I have, I have mm-hmm. iPhone clips and other other clips to like showcase the sturdiness of the, the mount and other stuff. So well, I think what's important is to. I think if there's anything that you take away from this is to be very, very, very purposeful about the way that you plan the video so that as they unfold, you know exactly the kind of clips that you want to come after certain spots, you know, you know um, exactly where you want things to go. You have these, these are the links to those um, Hollywood BTS clips that I found. I think organizing your clips and, or, and using your notes app or maybe a little notebook. I have a notebook here, for example, to make nice. sure that your, your clips are and, and, your, and your concepts and your ideas are very, very well organized can, can make your video go from, oh, I just started doing this oh, to, oh my goodness, am I a professional? <laughs> I guess I am. I don't know. And then surprise. That, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing this. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's a, that's, I think that's a really good um, thing to bring up, especially like towards yeah. the end here of just like, you know, you, you showed us that video. I had like literally no over-exaggeration. I had like a tear in my eye watching Aww. that video at the beginning Aww. for real, my friend. And then yeah. you're sitting here at the end here, like, am I a professional? I don't know. I'm trying to do this. <laughs> you know? Like it's, it's, it's what you, what you said is like, you know, we're human. This is the process, you know, and yeah. I hope that uh, I'm sure 
too that everybody who's been watching today i've seen a lot of like mind blown moments happening in the chat Thank throughout you. uh the, oh, yeah. the stream um and i think that uh what you have shown us is not only like a lot of really excellent information um, and, and methods and techniques for doing this, but it's been a really honest, um, kind of meticulous, transparent uh, yeah. version of what it's like to do this. Um, and I just really appreciate you, man. This has been Thank such Thank you. Thank a you so fun much. Time. It was so That's much fun. Last. Yeah, yeah, this is this Hell has yeah. been like, I mean, I knew it was gonna be cool, but like I didn't expect to laugh so much. I didn't expect there was gonna be spell casting. <laughs> that was, you know, um, but we got it, we got just a few minutes here. So yeah. um why don't we talk a little bit about uh, where people can find you again because okay. um, after you take off today I want to make sure everyone can get a hold of you and like look at oh, your yeah. work and yeah. and and know where you're at so where's yeah. the best place to find your videos and the best place maybe to get in contact with you after yeah. after this yeah so if you wanted to if you clicked on my Instagram bio you could find it it's just direct click to email me if you wanted to send me some videos to look uh, to look at if you've made some videos I'd love to see stuff that you guys create you can also find a lot of my reels these kind of short videos that I make on Instagram as well if you clicked on my reel tab you'd be able to see 10 20 of the last couple of reels that I've created um, but my my more long form video content can be found on on YouTube. That's where a lot of my passion projects go. That that big Lamborghini versus Tesla video. That's where it goes. Um, that's that's where you can find my stuff on Instagram and on YouTube. Thank you again so much for watching. I really appreciate you guys for tuning in for this super exciting live stream. It's been so much fun, Val. It's been such a blast. Yeah, yeah and I I think that the feeling is mutual. Definitely in the chat, we got William. This was good for me. Learned some new things. Ensu says this was extremely informative and humble. Link. Thank you so much for your time and care you, sharing with us. Um, Arturo, love today's streaming was so much. I learned a lot. Uh, Carl, thank you so much for sharing these insights. You got you got a lot of love coming to you in the chat. Love in the chat. Um, so much love yeah. to the chat as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. Yeah, thank yeah. you everyone for joining us. Please stay tuned for the next segment coming up. And me and Carl are out of here, uh, but we hope to see you um, on Instagram, as you said, and, yes. and all of these great places. So thank you all so much, yeah. and we will talk to you later. Adios, folks. Peace. Bye. Thank you.